Uh, now going to Professor Dr. Tim Ball. Timothy F. Ball heads the Natural Resources Stewardship Project, is on the Scientific Advisory Board of Friends of Science, an organization skeptical of human-caused global warming. He has a B.A. degree from the University of Winnipeg, a M.A. degree from the University of Manitoba, and in 1970 in geography, and a Ph.D. degree in geography from the University of London, England. In 1983, writing a thesis analyzing historical weather records from Canada's North Ball, taught geography at the University of Winnipeg, uh, Ball was featured in The Great Global Warming Swindle, a documentary film produced by Martin Durkin. This was the first aired in March 2007, uh, and he's been persecuted for his views, uh, of course, and targeted and called a climate denier, and uh, we're honored to have him. Um, Mr. Ball, good to have you here, Doctor. Well, thank you, Alex, and thanks for the opportunity, and, and you, all that you set up to now was, is uh, right on the money. And, of course, as we talked about earlier, uh, this, this is the second phase. The first phase was uh, more strong uh, using the IPCC and the UN and the, the Climate Research Unit people that, whose files have been hacked uh, were controlling the IPCC. They controlled the key chapters, so that controlled the science part of it. And then starting with the Club of Ro or sorry, no, with the uh, Rio conference in 1992, uh, where Kyoto was first uh, broached, um, that has led, and that was COP1, by the way, that has led now to COP15, where finally they're putting into place the whole uh, political uh, takeover that uh, Strong and these people planned. Uh, it's, it's the combination of using that false science to achieve this political goal. Absolutely. And, and again, the magnitude of open world government being announced for everybody and the, the open announcement that they are going to basically just get rid of the U.N., that's what The Guardian says, and have open government run by private banks. Well, and, and of course, uh, when, when you look back uh, at, at uh, say, what, what was being planned, and just prior to going to Copenhagen, Obama's on record as saying, no, look, uh, you know, this is our opportunity to get one world government, and, um, and the U.N. is the vehicle to do it. And so they'll use the U.N., and then once they've got what they want, they'll push the U.N. aside. Uh, this is the standard pattern. I, w I was interested in your comments about uh, Schwarzenegger. Of course, what, what Californians need to know is they've already had a taste of, of false energy policies, because Enron, uh, who were going to control the whole carbon market, um, were advising uh, California and our major cause of their economic problems. And by the way, he Schwarzenegger came out, was involved with Enron in meetings and profiting. Then he ran against Gray Davis, blaming Davis. Davis, for all his faults, was blocking Enron. And Enron, for those that don't know, uh, he later became Secretary of the Army, but Secretary uh, White was the Enron executive. They had fake computer programs that, that they would bring the legislature in and show them and congressmen in and say, here's why you're paying triple for power. This is what we bought it for. It was a fake system. I mean, these guys are just complete frauds. And Schwarzenegger is saying San Francisco will be underwater despite the fact that it's 938 feet at its highest point. Its uh, median sea level is over 600 feet. The U.N. claims it will only rise a foot to a foot and a half, and that's bogus numbers. Holdren says 13 feet, but Schwarzenegger says 900. Well, and of course, uh, Holdren, uh, there are, uh, the, the science are, there are emails in there, uh, in those hacked files. He was involved in this when he was at Harvard, and uh, there's an interesting little story with that. But in 1998, um, the carbon credits idea, of course, got grabbed by Gore, and uh, there was a meeting in the White House in 1998 with Bill Clinton, uh, Gore, Lord Brown of British Pet Petroleum, who has uh, been very big in this in Europe, and Ken Lay of Enron. And there they set out this strategy of how they were going to use the carbon credits uh, to set up this, this whole uh, control of energy uh, worldwide. So, um, yeah, th there's, there's several little fingers to this, but they've all been working around uh, the um, IPCC as their science and, the, and then the UN as their vehicle. And, of course, that's precisely what Strong said when he was asked by Elaine Dewar, uh, who uh, a wonderful journalist who started out, by the way, Alex, to write a book in praise of Canadian environmentalists 
And as she did her research, she found out they were more corrupt than the people that they were accusing. And so she ended up writing a, a book called Cloak of Green that says, look, here's, here's what these people are doing behind the scenes. And Morris Strong very clearly identified in that. And, and when he said that um, he was going to uh, shut down the industrialized nations, she said, well, why didn't you run for office? Probably the only honest thing he ever said was, you can't do anything as a politician. And uh, he said, I'm going to go to the U.N. where I can get all the money I want and not be accountable to anybody. And now and, he's uh, been caught so stealing we, we, the, uh, uh, in the oil for food program. involved oh, exactly. With well, that's one of the reasons that it's believed that he's hiding out in China, because the U.S. government want to uh, take him to court over that, as, as well as Kofi Annan and his, their, their two sons. So, um, yeah, Strong, Strong has achieved his goal. And, of course, it goes back to the Club of Rome, um, you know, this whole idea of one world government. Um, and, the, the, of course, the Club of Rome uh, came out with the um, limits to growth, grossly simplistic ideas that, uh, oh, we were going to run out of this and we were going to run out of the, that. All of their predictions have been wrong, yet they continue to have uh, such influence. Yeah, for those that don't know, uh, in, in the early 60s and then in 68 again, they put out, and we've actually gone to the library and gotten these, they're in my film Endgame, the Club of Rome reports, and it said that by the 80s we were going to flood, there was going to be an ice age, uh, then they said by 2000 we were going to flood, uh, Holdren said we had to double our CO2 to heat the earth in 77 or we would all die in an ice age. That's in the news today. And these guys, they're not wrong. They're just coming up with new frauds as flim-flam men to con people. Well, that's exactly right. And if you look at the strategy, and it, it, it's uh, the Saul Alinsky strategy, that, that if you want to uh, establish a new government, you've got to show that the current one is corrupt and get rid of it. And, of course, one of the ways you do that is you find one uh, fault or error, and you simply magnify that and say, look, um, uh, the whole thing is corrupt because this one part of it is corrupt. Now, I, I, what Madoff did, of course, was completely uh, unacceptable and certainly the largest fraud simply because the size of the economies have grown. But uh, to say from that, as they did, that the whole uh, market and uh, Wall Street and, and the banking and everything else is corrupt and therefore we have to take over, this is a, a Saul Alinsky strategy. And let me stop you, doctor. You're absolutely yeah. right. Who is saying we've got to get rid of capitalism it's the same big banks that actually engineered the crisis, and yep. their new system is just them having more power. Yep, exactly. And here's a quote. Uh, I mentioned the limits to growth, which, of course, turned out to be completely wrong. And Julian Simon, an economist at the time, challenged them, Paul Ehrlich, and he said, look, you name any minerals you want, any time period you want, and I'll bet you by the end of it there will be more minerals available and there will be lower price. Uh, Interestingly, Ehrlich then got John Holdren to go and pick out the minerals and to set the time. And, of course, it turned out that uh, Julian Simon won his bet. But they then published in 1974 a book titled uh, Mankind at the Turning Point, because already there were questions being asked about the cooling thing. And Stephen Schneider at NCAR uh, was starting to switch uh, ships uh, because the uh, global cooling ship was sinking. And um, so they were starting to shift. And here's the quote from Mankind at the Turning Point, 1974. It would seem that humans need a common motivation, either a real one or else one invented for the purpose. In searching for a new enemy to unite us, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill. And there it is. And that's what they, that's why, now, of course, the pollution, people started to deal with that because we all recognize that, that the environment's an issue. And by the way, one of the, one of the. Yeah, they take that, something, hold on, but you're right. They, they take things that sound reasonable and they candy coat their agenda with that when it has nothing to do with it. And, and, and all about humanity and helping the third world. But when you read the real treaty, it's going to double energy prices for the third world, resulting in mass death. I mean, that's a fact. Well, as H.L. Mencken said uh, 60 years or more ago, he said that the urge to save humanity is almost always a false front for the urge to rule. 
and uh, so you know, he pinned it right there. But of course, he's he's uh, uh, cast aside as as a you know a, a horrible cynic and so on. But he was looking at the reality of it. So as I say, out of that Club of Rome quote, um, we've dealt with the pollution. They they said famine. Well, 1976, they had a conference in in Egypt uh, on on um, uh, famine and food, and of course turned out to be absolute nonsense uh, because by the two, by the year 2000 the problem was there was too much food they were paying american farmers not to grow stuff and and so all of what they what they've t touched on uh, has turned out to be a bust and, and now because of ethanol a third of the us production and other production around the yeah. world we have a doubling in food prices and millions have conservatively starved to death they yeah. couldn't be happier because whether it's kissinger or ehrlich or Holdren, or Prince Philip, or Ted Turner, or Jacques Cousteau, all they, or Dr. Eric Pianca, or Peter Singer, all they talk about is setting up a planetary regime. Gore Vidal, 1969 Playboy magazine interview about how we need a global government to kill these people.